Hey everyone, so I've done a lot more reviews I have since the last time I would post something like this as of gaming wise. Um, every now and then sometimes reviews will either seem lazy or they may not seem lazy. Um, one thing I do actually want to say for this video is that I will be working on a Crash to Insanity review that I will release to at least 15 but there's two things I need to edit first before I can actually move on to that. Anyway, um, we'll see how that goes. But anyway, uh, here is Addy's Reviews. So, do you know two things when you think of the word be the Batman? Does this come to your mind? Or Arkham Knight? Well, I'm guessing Arkham Knight will come to your mind first because that was kind of like one of the first ones that had the slogan be the Batman. <laughs> yeah, today we're reviewing Batman Return to Arkham. But we're going to do it in a different way. We're going to do it in two parts, we are. First, we're going to review Arkham Asylum, and then after that, we're going to review Arkham City. Enjoy. Greetings and salutations people and welcome to another Addis Reviews in a style of Not Caddy. Today we're going to be reviewing Batman Return to Arkham. Now we're going to be reviewing Arkham Asylum. Now I have played this game a couple of times on Addis Games. At the moment I'm up in the trend of Uncharted I am and in fact at the moment I'm actually quite mad about it so um, yeah. Because um, at the moment I've got tons of footage of them on my laptop of gaming stuff, so I just want to use that up I did. So today we're going to be reviewing Arkham Asylum. Now, just to show you what the disc looks like in this thing. Now, here's one thing I don't understand. What does it mean when they put the Blu-ray logo on it? Blu-ray compatible, maybe? I have no idea. Okay. So, this game, Arkham Asylum, was originally on the PlayStation 3, the PC, the iMac, and the Xbox 360. Um, and then it came to the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One for Batman Return to Arkham. Now, this game is exactly the same game as of like the previous when it got released in 2009 by Rocksteady. This game is made by Rocksteady but updated with a different company. Um, can you remember at the time, uh, this time last year, this was the main hype point, hype point like, so we got Return to Arkham, Arkham VR, and then Arkham stuff went down from there. But I would say it's sad because like, I do my best to report on the new Arkham games, but it doesn't seem to be nothing coming up recently. So the storyline of the game is exactly the same as beforehand. You're going around stopping the Jokers, stopping thugs, boss battles. It's like before and same voice actors, but there are some changes to it. The controls are the same, unlike in Saint Trinity. Um, and also the graphics have been updated and also there's some more Wayne, Wayne effects in there and also the Wayne that they use in here is the same Wayne that they use in Arkham Knight which is awesome because well to be honest we love Arkham Knight so much don't we guys <laughs> like let's face it like I haven't played it for a while but I still love it um, so Arkham Asylum this game is also the game with Return of when Return to Arkham that basically this has all of the DLC from the DLC that was exclusive to the one that you can play as Joker. Everything, everything is in this game and it's amazing. The feel of having to play as the Joker and also with his one shot gun and also his little teethy thing and how he fights is amazing and he's also voiced by Mark. Hamill, which must have been like, wow, the people get to play as my character, the Joker, it's, that's just like amazing. So, I guess that's what came to it. 
like I said beforehand, this is exactly the same game, and there's not that many changes. And I'm afraid with reviews like this, when there's not that many changes, there's not that much to say. But are there spiders in the game? I'm just wondering, because in the first stages, I saw something moving around. I did, but um. I feel like with most games it's good to have it updated but now I understand why people would still like to play stuff on like PlayStation 3, the Xbox, the Xbox 360 or PlayStation 2 or Wii. Why? Because sometimes memory gets full or it's just better like that. And I guess when you've got the consoles and the signing works, it's all good. So I'm going to give Batman Arkham Asylum for the return to the Arkham. And just want to let you know when I talk about the PlayStation 4 and Xbox 360 port, um, one port, I'm talking about all of them. <laughs> Alright, okay, Batman Return to Arkham. Arkham Asylum gets a stunning 9 out of 10. Now, unfortunately, I couldn't really give it a 10 out of 10 because you guys would have gone mad at me in the comments. But um, the reason why I'm just letting that one point off is because, well, the game is really good. It's it's amazing. It's but they're like when they released it back in the day. There's still some things that they need to work on. Stealth, graphing, and also. When you throw batarangs, controlled ones, it can take a long time for it to actually come back. So yeah, so the, this game, Arkham Asylum, Return to Arkham, 9 out of 10. Not a point five out of 10, 9 out of 10. Anyway, I um, hope you enjoy today's video. Next, on the next and these reviews, we will go over Arkham City. Now we will be going over to um, our... Um, Uncharted The Lost Legacy, I'm editing it at the moment and it's taking a lot longer than I thought it would. That's just enough and not caddy episode. <laughs> anyway, uh, how do you fix microphone problems these, uh, these days? Anyway, um, thank you guys for watching. If it's your birthday today, happy freaking birthday to you. Make sure you hashtag be the Batman and please remember to. <laughs> In the next couple of days on the Addis 15 second I will release the deleted version of this. The deleted version is filmed with a much more new and more expensive camera but the microphone is total shit so I'm not even going to actually use it at all. Um, so I'll post the deleted one, um, I don't know when but soon let's say. It's still like an Uncharted with you but it's not what I wanted. The microphone is rubbish, it is. Comparing to this, you can hear my voice. I'm still working about it and working how I can use it, but it's going to take some time, but I'm still going to be using it because, well, it's a new camera, might as well. Today, we're going to be reviewing the Uncharted Lost Legacy. We are. Now, originally, I wanted to put this in a not caddy way, but I'm instead going to just put it in my own way, which means. Addies with views. A bit of a backstory to this game. Alright, so we had Uncharted 4 and then also Lost Legacy. This one you play as Chloe and also like your second companion, Nadine was. Now Samuel uh, Drake makes a um, return in this kind of like a fair companion until the end of the game. Your main thing is a Safar, uh, I think. It starts with an A, A, S, B, I don't know. Um, but he's basically your main thing. Now, I know one of the things that Caddy pointed out in his review that basically this villain is the same from Uncharted 2. Now, I only just started to play that game on the Addis Games channel, so guessing he's white. Um, yeah, but this this is basically originally it was going to be like a DLC to Uncharted 4, but then they made it longer, so it's kind of like a standalone DLC in Baboom. Now, as you know, I've kind of I think I've kind of already said this beforehand in one of my vlogs, but the cover to this is not as good Uncharted 4, uh, so I'm thinking that they only had about a year to spend on this. So they needed to get something out, which I hope they don't bring out another Uncharted game next year. If they do, that'll be fantastic, but 
let's just take a break one year without Uncharted and then we'll go back to it. I know that the last, um, the last of Us 2 is coming out soon, which I have no interest in to because I am still under the age limit to buy the game 17. Um, so now I've explained kind of like the storyline to this game, what do I think of it? Well, I think of it as of being like a good Uncharted game. It's not as emotionally gripping and also sad and as many chapters as of in Uncharted 4. And so this game, it's sad for it's sad for like a couple of minutes, then it goes away. Comparing that to the other one, Uncharted 4, longer, complete longer. And in fact, you're at grip that the only reason why you feel sad and bad for Nate is because all of this bad stuff has been happening, like orphanage, brother died, and then you're in a, you're in a house playing Crash Bandicoot. Well, that's not sad. But the thing is, like with this game, it's good. But the good stuff about it, there's for me, there's not that many. Now, no, I'm not saying this game is bad, but let me just explain. Um, I'm kind of, I find out that the good stuff is that the new designs of Chloe. And like Nadine, it's nice having her hair back, but Chloe is kind of like, it's different. It's like, we thought it was better when we saw her in the Nathan Drake collection from the PlayStation 4 or Uncharted 4. But now, her being in this game, the design is much more better. I do understand also that some of the storyline is realistic, which is quite good, which I like. The driving is okay, but it got boring after a while because, like, well, second time playing it around and trying to find out where to go and to automate and to get the hint to come up, you have to go and kill yourself, and then, and then it, the hint comes up. I, the driving, I just didn't really like it. And then after that, I'm thinking that people liked it so much because, like, there wasn't that many scenes of it in Uncharted Four. And then they wanted more of this, and also more of the stealth. I'm not a guy to do stealth. In fact, I only think stealth makes sense in Arkham Knight. Uh, because, well, those games have a better stealth than this. I'm literally saying that. Because you can shoot guns. But that might be my young mind saying that, oh, hey, shooting stuff is fun. So, one of the other good things is Samuel Drake. Now... Let's move on to the stuff I didn't quite like. One of the things I don't like about this game is you guys saying that you keep missing the reasons why you don't miss Nate from Drake. It's like when he, when I heard that he kind of died in, in some sort of a way during this timeline of Uncharted. It's like, are you guys going to be happy for it? Because like, I like Nathan Drake quite a lot and it was a good way to wrap up on him and Uncharted 4. I'm guessing more of him in the Uncharted film if it happens, but just like, ugh, please just listen to me once. Do you like Nathan Drake or not? All right. Now moving on to the stuff that I don't like. Um, so as I just previously just said, the driving stages. The driving stages are really good. I like it. The horn can, um, <sighs> but the driving stages are good. But they're not as good as Uncharted 4. And it's. Bleh. Now, there's not that many climbing stages as of like in the last one. There was fast defense with. There's not that many fast defense, but in this, the climbing is good. But I don't feel like it's limited, or I don't feel like it's like. Um, I don't know. The climbing's basically is fantastic, but it's not as good as Uncharted 4. Um, uh, the puzzle sol pus oh yeah, that. The puzzle solving is okay. In fact, pre uh, just now, as I'm doing my Eddie's games with um, Eddie's games uh, gameplays of Uncharted: The Lost Legacy, I in fact skip one chapter to not do one because it was so goddamn hard. I don't like puzzles that much at all, really. I only like them if they're super easy. But if they're hard, most of the time I'm not even going to bother. First time trying, you're going to have to do it. But then the second time when you're doing videos for it, I don't have time for that. It's just like the, the videos will extend to an hour because, well, 
I have to keep cutting them down so the uploading time is faster. Um, so the puzzles are not as good because in Uncharted 4 they spaced them out, they did. It was like you were, had a bit of an introduction, it's kind of like fight, 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 puzzle, and there's not that many, and they space it out to make it feel like it's just good, and it's kind of like the stuff what you need. Um, so yeah, so the puzzle stuff is not that good. I could go on to days saying that Uncharted The Lost Legacy about the things I don't like about it, but I will want to say this that this game is good, but it's not as good as Uncharted 4. There. So I hope you enjoyed my review of Uncharted The Lost Legacy. Um, so I have my final with the, in the last part, just well. Kids have stopped being noisy. Anyway, thank you guys for watching so much. If you want to go and check out Uncharted The Lost Legacy, um, some stuff I can say, I, put, I will put it in the description. Anyway, if it's your birthday today, happy freaking birthday to you, you're amazing. And please remember to stay beautiful. And... Um, sorry, I forgot. Um, I'm going to give Uncharted The Lost Legacy um, an 8 out of 10. Thanks for watching. Must think here about being the nerd or something else? No. Um, I am filming something, but I just wanted to do a quick review considering that um, I do want to get another review out of Western Evil with solutions for uh, the PlayStation 4 because I've recently been playing a lot and I will start doing gameplays of it because once you know the the places to go then it's easy. So today we're going to be reviewing the Harley Quinn Revenge DLC uh, from Batman Return to Arkham and also Arkham City. Um, so which I all of this was on previous consoles from the PlayStation 3 and the Xbox 360 and Mac and PC but then it came to the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One it did. So. Basically in this storyline that you're playing as Robin, which at the time of release of this um, game, um, it was amazing. People totally enjoyed playing as Robin. And through, through the segments you get to play as Batman, Robin and then Batman. And then also finally the final boss thing is basically you need to stop Harley Quinn you do. Which is also amazing. Um, playing as Robin feels fantastic, new gadgets, he can't much as glide and do much things as Batman, but they're both similar. This is the Tim Drake one, so I quite like this a lot, so yeah. Um, if you're the right age for it, I believe for Arkham City is for the original one is 15 and the other one's 16, um, I would suggest go ahead and play it. It's a good storyline and I would suggest play it after you play the main story in Arkham City so there's no spoilers for you. So yeah, um, the Harley Quinn Revenge DLC gets a 10 out of 10. Thank you guys for watching and the next review will be, well... Resident Evil Revelations. Now I've been waiting to do a review for this game for quite a long time. Now even though I haven't actually finished the final boss battle because well it's kind of like a game where you have to keep doing it again and again and again and you'll get it basically shooting him in the heart. But I feel like today is a great day that you know what I know most of the story I've already seen the ending because I want to see it. Let's review Western Evil Revolutions for the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. Now, would you say that this is basically your basic type of a horror game? Well, yes and no. The thing is, if you are a beginner for Western Evil like me once, and you don't know anything that much about this game or about the whole series, but you've heard of Western Evil beforehand, haven't you? Well, it's a great game to start out as of that this one is 16 and the original I think was 16. Um, it's still a game that you could get a bit of an induction to. Now, if you don't know, look, this is basically a remaster.
Yeah, it's a remaster. Take a look. Now, the reason why I ordered it on the PlayStation 3 because I'm starting to do it now is because, well, just in case if something wrong goes with the PlayStation 4, or if I decide to delete it. But, yet again, if you see from the back um, cover, that's the PlayStation 4, and this one's the PlayStation 3. They're different, they are. In a way that the online feature is not featured onto the Peggy stuff, which means that there's probably no online stuff whatsoever. But, there are some differences between the games. Now, even now I have actually never played it on the PlayStation 3, I only played it on the PlayStation 4, there is, I definitely know there are some differences. Because when looking up from gameplays with used to just to help me on this um, game, to, you know, just to, that's kind of like... Where do I go? Um, I do know that there are some changes. Now, it's just a great starting beginner for an Uncharted person who, not Uncharted, for Western... Well, um, if you're 15, I suggest you try out Western Evil 4 on the Wii and PlayStation 2. With them, that would be the only modern day 15 game that's Western Evil. It's a game that is old in textures and the style is old, but if you want to know the Western Evil series, I suggest you start playing that and then go on this one second. Because if you thought Western Evil 4 was good, man, we're only getting started here. Now, I will agree that at points this game, you know, like all other Western Evil games, they're supposed to scare you, but this one did at first, but during the end of the game, it didn't. Well, suddenly gripped me on to like, I want to keep playing it again and again and again. But now I've gotten to the final boss, it's going to be a little bit longer now until I finish the game. Because I don't want to spend hours on it. And of course gameplay footage will come to Addy's games once we're done with the stuff at the moment. But this game, I would say, is quite good. The story is basically that you're playing as Jill and also a person beside you called Parker. And you're going into this old boat and to explore the secrets of Feltro. Basically they started the, this big city panic they did and they destroyed a city they did. Yeah, believe it or not. So um <sighs> it's one of those sad things. Now Feltro is is referenced again in Western Evil Resolutions 2. And if you don't notice well <laughs> I'm not 18 so I can't actually play the, that game, which I just want to go on to my second point. One thing I don't basically understand about most of these Western Evil games, so you've got this one that's age 16, and then you've got Western Evil for the old one, which is weighted to 15, and then you've got other games that basically most Western Evil games are weighted 18. So is it like they can't really, like Peggy can't decide, oh hey, this game's out, this game will be ba 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 ba. Or maybe it's because of the graphics design and, and how and how modern games are basically more violent within Western Evil. Now, if you want to start out for the series in Western Evil and if you're 16, if you've got a PlayStation 4, get on PlayStation 4. If you've got a PlayStation 3, get on PlayStation 3. Because this is a good game with a good story and it's, I feel like it's better on modern day consoles and that's why I mainly got the PlayStation 4 to, um, you know, play the modern day stuff. I have no idea what's wrong with my hair today. But one thing I do find sad is that Feltro is kind of like the main enemy is for this one and their revival act is basically the one that starts this whole thing up and we know that it's all fake. But um, even if Feltro's in here, I'm not too sure, if, are they mentioned again in Weather Relations 2? Because if so, it's just like, I would like to know a bit more about, you know, Feltro. I would like to play more in that part. 
and because I feel like they don't get more screen time as they need to. Like I tried searching up, oh hey, was this person um, ever referenced in previous Western Evil games or modern day ones, apart from Revelations 2, and I couldn't find anything. So it looks like that maybe these worlds of Western Evil have separate universes. But the game, do I think it's bad? No. In fact, I think it's quite good, and I'm quite glad I got this on, I think it was on release day. So, I'm going to give Western Evil with Illusions a 9 out of 10. Out of that, I can't really finish, I haven't finished the final boss yet, and I feel like Feltro don't get them um, enough screening time. If it's your birthday today, happy freaking birthday to you, and please remember to stay beautiful, and also make sure you... Today we're taking a bit of, well, I'm not too sure if we may take a break or not. Hopefully there'll be two reviews like last Wednesday. Today we're going to be reviewing Star Wars Battlefront when it came out in 2015. This is the PlayStation 4 version. I've reviewed the beta of Battlefront 2. Let's do the game. Star Wars Battlefront came out back in 2015, where there was no storyline, and as people would know, not as good and didn't do as great, but in my opinion, this is good, this is. You're able to go through, um, play different assaults you are, you're able to um, either play as a rebel in, the, in these um, missions, you're able to play as some of the heroes you are, uh, including good and bad ones, and much, much more. There's a multiplayer one, there's online stuff, you're able to play as ships, and you're able to play blah, blah, blah. Rogue One characters are also in here, including one of the worlds from it. This game and the graphics is really good and it's nice, appealing to the eye. The lightsabers are the best. And if you were going to ask me, oh, hey, who's your favorite characters? Luke, Darth Vader, the Emperor and Han Solo. So, um, yes. Like, people may say it's not as good, and I do agree with them with most points. And there's different things you can do, but there's not enough. And also, with the DLC not being free, being really expensive, I actually did buy one of them, and I'm not doing that again because the DLC is mostly used for multiplayer, which sucks. And I hope they change this. And I hope they make the DLC free for Arcade. Anyway, so what do I give Star Wars Battlefront? I give it a 9 out of 10. If it's your birthday today, happy freaking birthday to you. And um, please remember to stay beautiful. May the force be with you. And also make sure you do I have been waiting a long time to review this game. Today we are reviewing Western Evil 4 for the PlayStation 4. Let's get into it. Greetings and salutations, people. This game, Western Evil 4, originally came out quite a long time ago, back in 2005, but over the years it's been ported to different consoles from the PlayStation 2, 3, 4, Xbox One, Xbox 360, uh, PC and much much more, but I've got the one on the PlayStation 4 that's weighted at 15. But if you open it, you would find a Peggy 18. Just go with the fact that it's originally 15. So with this game being um, most people would say being one of the one of the good ones, um, this you play as Leon Kennedy. You are sent to save the president's daughter as of she has been kidnapped by a delicious cult and you go through villages, you go through castles, you go through everything by facing off different boss battles and also um, encountering different monsters, different enemies, dogs um, and much much more. And also in one of the chapters you do play as Ashley, the girl that you're trying to save. Um, so yeah, who is the president's daughter? You also come across other different characters as of Ada Wong, who was um, in Western Evil 2, and now 
for nowadays been in other games from the um, uh, Dark Side Chronicles, uh, Western Evil 6 and some other ones also. Um, so you do end up saving her and then when that's done you get some options you do. You get to some stuff is unlocked. You're able to go back to the main story and we do it again as if it's, it says new round. So the difficulty is a bit higher but by then you're perfectly okay. You've got lots of weapons and you're able to do it so please don't worry. Just be worried when you get up to the final boss. That's when you should be worried. <laughs> um, so that's that. Um, you also get to have two missions with Ada as of playing as Ada. One of them being separate ways which is actually during the main story but you play as Ada and you go through well separate ways. Ada goes to the other and Leon goes to the other one. You do encounter Leon and you do have the same cutscenes uh, every now and then but Ada one is different. Then you got the assignment Ada. Now I'm not too sure if this is based before or after but you get to place Ada, and I know that this one's a short, you just click five Plaga samples, and then you're off. Um, the only bonus that you can't save in progress. You do it, and then you just you just have to do it in one go. You do also encounter a boss, which is Jack Krauser, so I'm guessing this is based after. Um, and then you also got the Mercen series, which is quite popular in the Western Evil um, series. This is where you get to play as different characters and unlock them. Leon is already there for Western Evil 4, but you're also able to get others if you get a full ranking. Um, you will be able to unlock Ada. You will be able to unlock Albert Wesker. You will be able to unlock uh, Krauser and Hank. And I think that's all I basically know. Um, but, yeah, it's very good, this is. You're able to replay, there's a lot of replay value, and I quite like it. And the graphics are a little bit different, the controls, I, I know if they're the same or not, but when I first played this, I was a bit like, whoa, the controls are a bit weird. And I was also a bit scared also. So what do I give Resident Evil 4 on the PlayStation 4? I give it a 10 out of 10. If it's your birthday today, happy freaking birthday to you. I should also say Halloween and yeah have a fantastic day and please remember to you guys are gonna hate me you guys are gonna hate me you thought I learnt my lesson but really I haven't now what am I talking about well today we're gonna go back in the in our original formula of how we did these things. Now guys, if you are new around here, I do refuse and I really wanted to make this thing not caddy and also addy. I wanted to make this thing into a fun thing but I just basically stopped using the caddy formula and then I just used my own boring one by using the green screen. Alright, I'm sorry but I'm afraid the public asked for this. But now, today, uh, just for Halloween, I'm going to bring it back. We're going to have some fun. Now, I deleted my Spyro episode that I was about to edit a couple of months ago because I, it was on there for a very long time. Today, we're just going to have talking about the Western Evil age gap. I want to show you something that you may not know and get you guys to understand of why this exists but also trying to make you laugh during the process. Now, please go ahead, dislike this button. This is, I know, I, I know I'm not caddy, and I know that I'm using his formula. I know I'm using everything that he does to make this great. Look, I'm a small YouTuber, I need views, okay? And I'm probably gonna be, um, well, disabling comments and dislikes because well that happened last time man you guys hate me so much so what I'm about to show you is that I'm about to show you the Resident Evil games that I own that are newer gen consoles but these are the ones that are weighted 16 and 15, but also 
in my head they're capable. I couldn't really go ahead and play Resident Evil 1, 2 and 3 for the PlayStation 1 because, well, they don't fit me. I wouldn't mind playing on the PlayStation 4, but I just want to show you this. Okay, so we'll go one by one and I'll explain. This is not the funny part. So here we are Resident Evil Weather, Weather Lucians. And this is the PlayStation 3 one. Now, the differences between these discs is not how the design goes, but this symbol here, that's a 15, 16, 16, 16, 16. You see how that 15 sign's not there anymore on the PlayStation 4 one? And that's the difference. And also here, it's a 16. That's very good. Moving on to Resident Evil 4. Now this one got released on multiple consoles it did, but it's still, for the newer gen waiting, it's still got the 18 waiting for two of the countries, but also receiving the original waiting of 15. 15. Now, if your parents were strict about this, and if you were 15 and you bought this, and then you opened it up and then they found out it was 18 for you, then they wouldn't let you play it, or they may do, but some parents don't. And here's what I will say, this game was originally 15, so if you buy it on the Wii, it will still be the same game. Okay, I've played this, I've watched gameplay footage of other consoles, and I can tell you it's the same, I don't need to play it to know. And then you got the Western Evil, the Dark Side Chronicles. Now, these last two, this game, and the last one, I could definitely say why they would put this as a 15. But I also feel like if you have spiders in your game, you should wait as an 18 automatically. So, here's what we've got. We've got two 15s and one 18. Now, that's stupid because the original Western Evil 2 and Code Veronica was never actually rated 18. 15 for start, and now 16 for the newer ones. Um, and then the newest mission, which never was fulfilled, well that's I guess 15. So if you're buying this game and you open up this, just follow your own age rating just for this game. This one is an 18. Now with the need for Operation Working City, which I really want to do a gameplay video of, but my PlayStation probably keeps spazzing out, two 15s, and that's still 15. So what I have showed you is that the only one that has two 18s and that has a Peggy 18 is this. this yeah, this shouldn't be there. Alright. What I just showed you is that the different age racing be between different Western Evil games. You've got Western Evil 7, that's an 18. But then you've got Western Evil 4, um, that's a 15 slash 18. But unfortunately you do have to go with the original age rating. Unless if for certain reasons. Like for instance, um, when the... If a game comes out, I wish for the PlayStation 1, and then they put it as a 15, but then they change some stuff around with the graphics and stuff, and they make it more appealing than they do to an actual game that would look something, and then put it on the PlayStation 4, and then they do an 18. In some ways, I feel like it, it's reasonable. But, if it's the same game, and nothing much hasn't changed apart from the graphics are updated to suit the console, and how you play it is still there and the original release year is still there like 2005 to 2016 for the Western Evil 4 one if you see that and everything's still the same and and you feel the same as playing this one on another console like PlayStation 2 then then that becomes unacceptable it shouldn't really be oh hey you know what it came out 15 then but it's newer time and and graphics and stuff. What's the Evil 4? We're gonna put an 18. What's the Evil 4? Never has never been an 18 part of the country that you just saw, apart from Peggy. So, hey guys, welcome. Today we will be reviewing Disney Infinity 3.0. Just want to let you know this will be short and short for two reasons copyright for use and their own content. And, uh, I don't have that much interest in this game and I want to keep this video short. Here was the intro. So 
Now, just a quick side note, when I get the green screen out, or when I've got it here, basically means I don't give a shit about this game. Disney Infinity 3.0 would be the last Disney game that, well, the Infinity series would ever make. This one, beforehand, it had Marvel and then Disney, but now it has got Star Wars to boost it all up. Poif! Um... 4.0 was planned, but it got cancelled and I reported on that um, a couple of months ago on at least at gaming time. Okay, so Disney Infinity 3.0 has separate storylines. So separate that I can't really explain it. You got a basic Clone Wars story, you got a basic Disney story, and you got some other basic stuff like you're able to I guess replay Civil War, The Force Awakens and much much more. For the time and for your white age, Disney Infinity 3.0 is a good game but the problems lie in the game itself. That the storage is too massive it is. Yeah you can download this game before your most site but the con is that you, have, you will have to pay for stuff and and it's just a, the file thing is just too large. Now, nowadays, you could able to buy content online with the DLC with it. But now, if you want to access that stuff, you have to get it on the consoles. It, it's not available on your PC, iMacs, whatever, because they went out of doing that. So, this Infinity also has a long range of characters. And even though it was good, when I did gaming videos, it knew it was Disney Infinity, and I said, right, you know what, fuck you, Adam, we're taking a long time to upload. Anyway, I swear I don't hate the game. The graphics is good, but, yeah, again, storage is one of the problems. This Infinity 3.0 gets 7 out of 10. Thank you guys for watching so much, and hopefully next time we'll do a better gaming with you. Peace. And if it's your birthday today, happy freaking birthday to you, especially you, Yag TV, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace. How fantastic is this? I'm doing a part two, I am, to Batman Return to Arkham. We're going to be reviewing Arkham City. And how fantastic is this that this is on the following week that the Justice League film is coming out, and we're doing a DC game. Welcome to, I guess, another review. Uh, here's the intro. Before I begin, if you want to go and see the Arkham Asylum with you and also the Harley Quinn with French with you, then please go ahead and I will put it in the cards or links will be in the description. Now let's get into it. Okay, greetings and salutations people. Okay, so what is Arkham City all about? Well, this game is all about where, uh, before Arkham Origins got released, this is where it left off, it did. Now, <coughs> Arkham City, you play as Batman, you do, and you're in this lit. You're in this little bit of Gotham. You are. They call it Arkham City, and and the main villain for this one is Hugo Strange, and also the Joker, and also I would say number three would be the Whittler. <coughs> you go through to you in this story you go through to do different things like for instance you have to stop Harley Quinn um, you face different boss battles and also you get to also play as Catwoman via DLC the story is something that most people would say that this is kind of like the greatest Arkham game yeah, for their opinion for mine not really Arkham City it takes place in Arkham, but also having little tiny bit references to the other things in the DC Universe. Other characters do make an appearance, like for instance for the good ones you've got Whopping, you do. Nightwing doesn't make an appearance at all, but Barbara Gordon um, also is kind of like your intel for if you need help or not. Boy is actually, I would say, very good. In my opinion, Arkham Knight is better, but I feel like that's a video for another day. Now, where you end off at the end is that um, at the end, the Joker does die, Hugo just. Hugo dies, and you also find where Shao is also behind us as well. He dies, but it makes a return for Arkham Knight because truly he was never dead in the first place in Arkham City. 
Now, what is the ending conclusion from Arkham City? Well, in the end you do end up saving people you do, but after the Joker dies, somehow Batman gets all depressed and then that's how Harley Quinn's Revenge leads up next. This game is a good game. And for this game being on the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One, I feel like the graphics are much more better and they've also used some graphic types from Arkham Knight and they've also made some new ones. Everything is a bit brighter for Return to Arkham. And, and also with the same with the Game of the Year edition, you do get all of the content together instead of you having to pay for it. And plus, Return to Arkham does not take us much room as you thought it would. Yes, you can also get this on like, I don't know, PlayStation Now or I, uh, I, and that's why we know about it. But I would suggest buying this, skipping PlayStation Now and, have, and just having a fantastic time. Now, have you ever thought, oh hey, I want to play as Nightwing? Well, you can in the challenge modes, you can. Well, the Widdler challenge modes. Now, there's actually a separate storyline which I think is really cool. During um, Arkham City, Alfred notifies Batman that there are some people coming to Wayne Manor, um, I guess, to kill him. And then Batman notifies Nightwing to go back there, and he does that to defend him. And that's how, when you're playing in Wayne Manor as Nightwing, that's how the storyline goes. Now, I never knew that, but to be honest, that's so cool that is. That, that, that little storyline was in there. I'm not too sure if that was either the comics or what said he made it, but that is amazing. Return to Arkham, Arkham City gets 9 out of 10. Now, now this is the part where I'm going to have to say another review score. Return to Arkham in total gets 9.5 out of 10. I don't feel like this is kind of like the greatest as they're doing because the controls in Arkham Asylum is a bit not up to standards as it is and Arkham City not up as it is and if you're a 15 year old or 16 year old and you're getting fed up with this and then of course I would say go to Arkham Origins but really you won't have something fresh until you're 18 with Arkham Knight Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this with you. If you want to go ahead and see the Justice League, then I will go and leave some links down below. And I will guess I'll see you all on the next one. Anyway, if it's your birthday today, happy birthday to you. And I will uh, be the Batman and peace. It's been 10 years since the first Uncharted game got released. So I figured out today that, of course, we've, we've done Uncharted for The Lost Legacy. And we're, I've done part one of... Uncharted 2. But just to be fresh today, we're going to be reviewing Uncharted 3 from the Nathan Drake collection. I guess, well, here's the intro. Uncharted 3 is not the best game to admit. It's got Nathan Drake, it's got Elena, it's got Sully, but it's not the best one. I figured out that um, maybe Uncharted 2 is good um, and Uncharted 4 and The Lost Legacy it would be better than these. But um, I feel like the only time that they went through something a bit more really, really different and longer was Uncharted 4 because that's like the first time that they actually put a PlayStation 4 game there without recreating stuff. In Uncharted 3 your new enemy is, is this new group called the Mole brown thing, calf, whatever. You met this girl, you met this woman, this criminal, with her little group thing, back when she were, back when Nathan Drake was a young kid. You also get to play as 15 year old uh, Nathan, which is good, because now, then after that, I just thought it was the child version with an extended story. Also, um, for this game, if you got it on the on the PlayStation 4, then the graphics are a bit more um, higher quality. You also get introduced to another new character called um, Charlie Cutter, including Chloe Fraser is also back in this one. Now, this one, the reason why I don't like it is because the combat is good, but the muscle the there's problem solving and all these other things. There's too many there are, 
and it just makes it boring, it does. And it just, in a way of saying that it's not really that fun. And I'm afraid that's much I can really say about that bit. But the storyline and, and how it all goes of how like how Sully meets and um, this young Nathan Drake boy, I feel like it's amazing. And Sully gets to be known as, as this somewhat of a father figure that Nathan probably hasn't had in quite a while. So what do I give this one, Uncharted 3 in the Nathan Drake collection? I give it, and this is probably going to be the lowest score, I'm going to give it a 6 out of 10. Too many puzzle solving, it took way too long to do, and I, I don't know, I just don't like it as much as anyone else. Thank you guys so much for watching, if you also want to go and see what they're doing for the 10 years stuff, so, now I'll leave some links down below so you can download the exclusive PlayStation avatar things um i wasn't able to access it but i'm sure it's still there and you'll be able to pay for it anyway thank you guys so much for watching if it's your birthday today happy freaking birthday to you and i'll see you all on the next one peace oh hey welcome to a review of star wars battlefront 2 i've literally just completed the campaign mode and well let me tell you it's fantastic we'll be talking about other stuff but first, here is the intro, and whilst that's on, I'm going to defend myself. <laughs> Greetings everyone, hopefully, uh, force. So as you know, this, yes, this is my first case, my first game that I've actually got on the Xbox One and as you see it's Star Wars Battlefront 2 the standard edition now inside it came with some stuff that I didn't really use a code well that's not kind of bad but bubble. I'm not going to use the code so whatever you want to screenshot that so Star Wars Battlefront 2 is a completely different game from the last one, from the flaws that it had in 2015 to now, everything has changed, well almost everything. Let's talk about the campaign. The campaign is set between Return of the Jedi and The Force Awakens, with new chapters to be added for The Last Jedi. Now, here's the thing, you play as Aiden Fersio, who works for the Empire, and who's also in, a, with, in this little squad with other two people, the Infernal Squad. And what they need to do is that they're trying to regain peace to the Empire after Darth Vader's and also the Empire saw sort of Darth Sidious' death. Now, the war is still going on after the Death, Star, the Death Star's destruction. And you play as Ida Versio, including also with some help from her little droid that you play at White right Star, which is very nice. Now, not just that, but there are different chapters. Now, during as you go along the different chapters, one of the first ones you play as Luke Skywalker, who has mainly just came from defeating Darth Vader and the Emperor, and witnessing his own father's death. He's probably not too happy, but also feeling calmer he is, as of he meets some animals, creatures, and also some stormtroopers, including one of the members of the Inferno Squad. You go through it as of Luke Skywalker is trying to find something to make a Jedi Temple and to start the Jedi Order once again. As we know now, it all failed again. But that's how it goes. Um, the Inferno Squad member destroys the Emperor's fault and moves on. Now, with the other chapters, briefly, you go ahead and play as Aiden again for the one last time as an evil person, turning into a good person after the home world is getting destroyed and, well, the father's going completely nuts about it. Now, um, what do you do? Well, you do actually save some civilians, which is fantastic, and then you play as different characters after that from Princess Leia to Han Solo to a couple more chapters with Iron Versio including spaceship flying stuff and then also there's a chapter where he plays Lando Kyrissian and then the final one is Kylo Wen. Newer ones are supposed to be added on I have no idea how it's going to be but please know I'm reviewing this 
before the actual uh, release date of um, the 12th of December, which is when new stuff gets added. So what do I also say about the um, other stuff in it? Well, we know that there have been some problems, which I will say that this only affects mainly the people for online. They do. If you're playing in arcade, you should be all right. Now, as of... Um, the heroes, the heroes and the villains are much bigger as of I enjoy it, I really love this game. Now we know that it's been a popular trend to hate in this game but really I will give this a score that I feel like I should give. Yoda looks fantastic, Sidious more looks more like Sidious, Vader slower but also feels much much better and also some relation to Anakin Skywalker. But um, shame that Obi-Wan Kenobi is not there yet. I heard he's going to be coming soon. Throughout everything else that I have done, best scenarios, custom arcade, it's all fantastic. And the graphics is fantastic, and Camino is my favourite place. Star Wars Battlefront 2 gets 9 out of 10. One being reason that many of the favourite characters wasn't there on release day, and also the glitch happens when you turn off your console and turn it back on. We have heard that with new updates that they will try and improve that, but yeah. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this review. If you want to go and buy this fantastic, beautiful game, then go down and buy it it's below. DLC is free, it is, so yeah. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. May the Force be with you. Go and see The Last Jedi, and I'll see you on the next one. If it's your birthday today, happy for your birthday, good. I'll see you on the next one, peace. That's a better I sign Life is Strange is a fantastic game. I'm still playing it to get all of the bits that I've missed or how I wanted to do. Now, you're probably going to say to me, Adam, why haven't you done this with the other ones? Like, if it's episode and why? No, I'm sorry and I do apologise for that. I know I had to do it with Strange Things or Western Evil Revelations. But the truth thing, to be honest, I thought I could fit it in and get my brain sorted. To be honest, I'm going to admit now, I didn't. Today we're going to be reviewing Life is Strange Episode 1. And we're going to be doing many episodes of reviews each week. These won't be as long, but at least it'll be something. And yeah, we will come, we'll, we, we, we will do Before the Storm as well. Here's the intro. Life is Strange is a video game about you playing as a young teenage girl adult called Max. Max had a friend called Chloe. Five years ago, she moved and never actually spoke. Whilst Chloe's story in those five years is actually told about in Before the Storm, links below. This one is basically after. So Max comes back to Arcadia Bay to this high school. The first image of this um, episode one is that, well, we're in a storm we are, and it's basically just somewhat of a dream. But what Max does not know that this is something more, and something may get given to her, a power that could be deadly, or that could be used for good. In this, we she wakes up, and she's in a class called, well, Phototovki, which which seems to be because they're talking about her. The teacher, Mr. Jefferson, and also other students named as Kate Marsh, Victoria Chase, and much more, are in this class. Now, the first thing that may come to know that this is a choice game, so you can choice, you can make different choices of what to do, what not to do, all of that, including dialogue choices, much more. Now, I'm not going to go too much in the dialogue stuff, but basically after this little scenario, the main first point is that Mr. Jefferson and his Everyday Heroes Contest. He wants you to enter, but you have not yet, and, and you're enthusiastic and you don't want to, and you're basically saying to yourself, I have a terrible gift, Max. So, when you walk out of the classroom, the intro sequence start and you're playing in it you are whilst Max is listening to some music and with episode 1 being paralysed you walk to the bathroom to have a stress out segment 
you take a photo of a butterfly that comes in and then the main bits actually begin. A student called Nathan Prescott, one of the sons of the Prescott family who's been dominating Arcadia Bay for about the last six years already, is basically in this room, in the bathroom, in the girls' bathroom, being all angry and calming himself down, a bit like a psychopath. Then no, no, this random girl comes in. Max doesn't know her yet, but this is Chloe, her friend that she neglected for five years. And this is when we see her. Now, spoiler, she dies, but before doing that, Max goes up, no! And then she discovers she has time rewind powers. She can't go forward in time like anyone could, but she can go back in time. Anyway, so off that she could go back in time and we live the moment in a way that this is the future and she could tell time she could. She discovers her powers and wakes up back in the Jefferson's class, or Dave Jefferson, at the back at the beginning. And then, well, main for this bit, that you have to save Chloe. You do that by getting a hammer and smashing the fire along with it, and Chloe is saved. But then this starts on something else, that before you go out, you have to tell Principal Wells what's wrong. If you don't tell him what's wrong, then he'll assume that you're bad. If you do tell him what's wrong, then he'll assume that you're good, but then he's looking into it. Please press on the bit where you report Nathan, because the story will go as it's told. If you click on the other options, then it may not seem as the story is told, then you will not get the full thing, and this will reflect on your consequences. Each action that you take either has a good consequence or a bad consequence. When you report Nathan as soon as you go outside, by seeing a lot of people including signing a petition and talking to other students, you also see tons of thousands of posters of Rachel Amber, a missing student that's in before the storm that died by the hands of Mr. Jefferson and Nathan. But as you go out, Principal Wells announced that can Mr. Prescott come to my office, to assuming to talk about what you've just reported? Now that's where it starts really. You go to get Warren's flash drive, you give it to him as you're talking, Nathan Prescott comes and he's about to choke you, or maybe even hurt you. Lucky enough, Chloe comes along to save the day, well her so let's say. And that's where most of it starts out. You talk, you meet the dad, you do, and then by the end of it, well, it's basically Chloe discovers there's something wrong with you. After you faint, you come back up, it snows, and there it is. Episode 1 is a fantastic start. If you want to get it, it's free for most of the consoles. It's a great start, and I love it. So, episode 1 gets a complete 10 out of 10 for me, it feels short, but in a way, I like it. This is just the beginning of a normal life that turns quite shit. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this part, episode 2 of this. Well, I guess it's going to be coming quite soon. Anyway, uh, if it's your birthday, say happy freaking birthday to you. And I will see you all in the next one. Please remember to stay beautiful and also open. Uh, so, I guess we're actually doing this now. Welcome to Life is Strange, episode 2, The With You. His intro. <music> Episodes will always pick up from my last left off because otherwise, what's the point? Episode two, I could, I've, we played this a couple of times to get the ending that I wanted, and I finally got it. Yes. Sorry. Episode two. Okay, so at the start. You're still playing as Max. You're waking up, you ask for a beautiful day, and you need to go to the bathroom to have a shower. You end up meeting Kate, that also wants her book back. But then you also, depending on your decisions, she talks to you about recent events that happened with David on episode one. Now, depending on which one you do, uh, by the ending, this will affect her quite a lot by the ending. Now, you go and have a shower after the conversation, and then you, whilst you're in the shower, you end up listening to Victoria and Taylor basically teasing and bullying Kate. And then you go out, you get the book 
you get dressed, you go and get the book, and then you give it back to her, and then you talk about it. But then the first big decision. She asks you, Max, should I go and tell the police? And then you can either say, yes, go and tell the police, or no, wait for, just give it time and get more proof. I chose go to the police. But then also, it drags you into it, pending how the ending is. So you go along, and the next bit is, well, breakfast at the two whales. You end up meeting Joyce, Chloe's mother, who is very nice. And uh, depending on what you did in episode one, she either is not annoyed with you or is annoyed with you. In my ending, that I work very hard for, not annoyed. So, Joyce, you end up talking about recent events, how Chloe is, William, and then you go, and then Joyce goes and gets the food, then comes back, Chloe comes in, and um, you start testing out your time travel powers. You have to tell her what's in her pockets and what we the events are about to happen for the next 30 seconds. And then you end up going. And then the second big choice, you can either answer Kate's phone or you can just leave it. I chose answer because this will impact Kate quite bigly in the end. But if you do answer the phone, then Chloe and Joyce get in an argument. If you don't answer the phone, then they don't get into an argument and you're able to escape it. But it's like, you can't make choices for everyone because no matter how much hard it can be, you can either, you're only one person and you can only make time for certain people. So you go out and the next location is the junkyard. You go out there and you start testing your time travel powers even a bit more with shooting bottles or before collecting them of course. And then also you went and then shooting different random things and then Yeah, and then Max faints and then she comes back out from seeing the storm again and not really much happens in that scene. But then also uh when you wake up, it's Max turn to fire but Frank. Frank is a drug dealer who his story has got explained within this game but it gets more explained before the storm of how Chloe and Frank n know each other. Now, uh, the second big choice, you can either shoot Frank or don't shoot. Now, no matter what ending that you, not matter what big choice that you choose, there's not a bullet in there. He's not going to die yet. Sorry, you're going to have to wait until episode 4 about that. But after that, it's either he's going to be more of a threat to you or not. And then the fight, I think, there's not, there's not really any big decisions after that. But the big one, and I'm going to skip it right to the end now, you have to save Kate from committing suicide. Now, depending which choices you make, you would either be able to save her or not save her. And if you're first time playing and if you're lucky, you may not save her. So, I actually saved her after so many times. It will take you quite a long time for you to save her. And, yeah, so it will take you a couple of times to, to try this out and to save her. And, and the, end, the outcome of this, she's in hospital. She's all safe and sound. But other things you still have to do. Now, so what do I think of episode 2? Episode 2 is a great follow up to episode 1. And I believe episode 2 gets another 10 out of 10 from me. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you all on the next one. Uh, peace, peace, peace. As you see, I will not be using green screen for this video. Not to say I have stopped using green screen, but it's just, uh, it's just a thing. It's weird that this thing's attached to it. Welcome to um, Life is Strange episode 3, The With You. Mainly continuing where episode 2 left off. Um, let's get into it, this gets interesting. So, Life is Strange episode 3 takes two different turns. Of how you did episode 2, did you save Kate or did you not? 
Now I have played the game over about five times and on my fifth time I actually saved Kate from committing suicide. She's now alive and well and in hospital resting and you will get to see her more in episode four and how our impact is throughout the next uh, three more episodes. She is alive and well and you do receive texts from her but let's actually get down to the bigger picture for this. It's night time and you're waking up and Max says Kate, as of still dreaming about it, and looked like she was doing something either work on a laptop or just mainly just tired from being a hero. Now, from this, um, I need to check something. So I just need to check something. From this, um, you get a text from Chloe on that you're going to go. You need to meet her in the middle of the campus and you go ahead and you find more clues. You go into the principal's um, office, Way Wells, and you have a look at his computer. But before going in there, you need to get in. There's no key, there's no way else of getting there, so you text one to ask how would I need to get in there, like a bomb or something. You go and look for the ingredients and then you make it and then you. And then you go boom, alarms, rewind, and then you get in there eventually. You do find what you need and wait sure in the dark room, wait sure in the dark room. Remember that for the other episodes. And then what comes next is that, well, we have an ill fun swimming session with Chloe, we do. And then Max doesn't go back to her dawn because Chloe says, You're fugitive on the one now. You go ahead and sleep at Chloe's home for the night. Now, um, you do, and you wake up, take a selfie, and then the first big twist comes ahead. Well, actually, second. You can either kiss Chloe, or not kiss Chloe, as of a dare. I say kiss, because I love that type of stuff. Now, um, after that happens, you go down and Max is, um, you see Joyce, she do it, she makes you breakfast, you see David, and then there's a confrontation there. You can either side with David or you can side with Chloe. I sided with Chloe, but by doing this, David has a higher more chance of getting kicked out of the house. You'll see that more impacts on episode 4. You leave to go and get Frank's keys. You do by doing different stuff. From a newer point of view, this could be harder for beginners. But, if you understand it, you'll be able to do it. Now, it doesn't really matter how you approach Frank, whether you decided to shoot him or not in episode 2, episode 1. It doesn't really matter. You end up getting the key. Third choice. Third big choice come along. You can either throw the bone in the road or you can throw it in the parking lot. Throw in the parking lot, he stays alive. If you don't throw it, if you throw in the road, he does not stay alive. You look for more information on what Frank has got and you go ahead, you go out, you do, and um, um, and my mind has gone blank. You know what? I'll show you this trailer. I think we're all responsible for what happened. Maybe Kate was so ashamed she got wasted on that video. You really believe that Kate wanted to get drunk at a Vortex Club party? Oh yeah! We just need to connect the plates. And find out more about who Rachel was involved with around here. Weird shit is going down at Blackwell. And I'm going to find out why. We better find out what's in the principal's office first. This is so cool! Check out that note. Rachel in the dark room. What does this even mean? Holy shit! You can rewind if we get caught, right? Your power is changing everything, Max. You're becoming like this force of nature. We still have to be careful how I use my power. I don't want to get stuck in time. The Amazing Spider-Max. Get in! You have serious balls, little girl. But playing with guns and dressing like Rachel doesn't make you tough. How do you know these are Rachel's clothes? I don't want to see you again, Max. You've hurt me and my family enough. 
My dad gets killed. Rachel betrays me. Rachel is missing. Why does everybody in my life let me down? You don't know shit about my father or me. I'm gonna kill you. Oh no, this is totally fucked up. So what do I think of episode 3 overall? Well, episode 3, Life is Strange, is a good game it is. I like how the ending is and also how it impacts on something it does. And this is kind of like a thing where you save William at the end you do, but you have to reverse it and then you, you're in a time lock you are. You don't know where the hell you are because you're going through the same things again and again and again. And different things are changing. Episode 3 gets a 9 out of 10 for me. Thank you guys so much for watching. And if you like my Christmas sweater, please like this video below. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Merry Christmas. I think I should be saying that by Hey everyone, so the reason why I'm doing a joint review from episode 4 and episode 5 because I think we need to get a bit going, we do. <coughs> uh, here's a review. Episode 4 of Life is Strange starts... This episode basically is an episode where lots of bad shit happens at the end a person will actually die. So at the start of this, you're in your new reality with Chloe you are, and you're talking to her. And one of the big decisions at the end you need to make is that you either kill Chloe or you keep her alive. But any way of shape or form, you still have to get back to your present timeline. Also, William is still alive and, you've, and things have changed and you've never met Warren before. Basically, Nathan... Prescott um, filled that spot in. So, when you go back to your usual timeline, um, you find out that you've been investigating, looking for clues, and you've been in Chloe's uh, womb. You have so you go back to the um, um, so you go back to the school to get some more clues from Nathan, as of a phone, and also from Frank. You do need a code, but that'll be much later. Uh, you talk to some people, find out Nathan's around and he's not, but really he is, and he's just coming back as soon as you get the phone, and then Nathan and Warren fights, and then the second big choice happens. You can either intervene, or you can just leave it. So, after that, whatever choice you make, um, it's kind of like Warren is still a badass, he is. After that, you, go to, you need to go to Frank, you do, and then this ends up in multiple ways. You can either be nice with him and no one gets hurt or killed, or you could either get him to shut the door, but that's only if this happens, if that Frank and the dog dies. And then you can ask him to shut the door when you rewind, and then only him will get hurt in the legs. So you do that, you do. You go back and the big part is the investigation. Now, depending how Chloe is, depending from your choices, it's more like she's either sad or happy. Um, but you end up do investigating and also David gets kicked out, but he becomes a hero within the next episode. And, um, and, um, Later on, there's a Vortex party. I may be missing stuff out, but there's a Vortex party um, during the end of the episode, and you want to. You're going to go and warn people about Nathan, and I think Chloe wants to kill Nathan, but really, Nathan's already dead. Um, so you go to the party looking for him, trying in the Vortex club, and you see Victoria, you do. You either can warn her, not warn her, when you're talking, warn her or not warn her. I would say warn her, even though she's a bit of a bitch, warn her. So you go, you do, and Jefferson announced the winner, which is Victoria for the Fifth Day Hero contest. And we know that, well, Victoria's gonna die next, but you go back to the junkyard, you do, and well, it's all been a trap because. Because Max has been drugged and Chloe has been shot. 
Episode 5 of Life is Strange is basically the last episode to an end. Now, by the end of this choice, you're going to have to make the hardest choice that 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 Toad Entertainment well tells you what you have to do. So at the start of the episode, you're with Jefferson. You're over most of it. You are, and you go through different timelines. You do repeating to yourself and going through a separate timeline where Jefferson and Nathan's got arrested. Unfortunately, the storm still happens and Chloe dies on that one. So by the end of it, you're having to be on your own timeline and go back to the very, very, very beginning. How <laughs> just kidding? You're having to go back to that night in episode four. And you go and find a picture of Warren. Now you tell Warren before this, you tell Warren that you have powers you do and you can time travel and he believes you, he does. And you can either choose before you leave, either to, well, leave it, hug or kiss. I chose kiss, because why not? Um, so you go back, you do, you tell Chloe everything you do, everything that's happened and you go and I guess you're going to tell David and you follow up what Max wants to do and then she comes back for a bit and then she faints and then you're in the biggest nightmare scene you are. Um, this nightmare scene is basically everything that you've done since episode 1 is preparing again here. So, um, and you also, one of the coolest bits about this is that you go to the diner, you do, you have to have a code, you do, and you find it is actually the one that's on the window screen in the toilets. You go out and you see there's other people in the, and then you see another Max, another you, and it's basically, she says, it's like, like, Max is that you leave behind. So when you we wide, like for instance, so when Max was about to uh, uh, save Chloe, um, of course she's rewinding and then created another timeline and she left that Max behind and that other Max saved Chloe but the first Max didn't save Chloe and Chloe's dead in that one so really Chloe was always originally dead if that helps you understand so by the end of it I'm just going to skip everything ahead you either have to sacrifice Chloe or sacrifice Arcadia Bay if you sacrifice Chloe, then you save everyone. But if you sacrifice Arcadia Bay, you save Chloe, and most people die in Arcadia Bay. So you have to choose. I know I chose. I would have chosen both. I would. But so by the end of it, it's either if you sacrifice Chloe, funeral. If you sacrifice Arcadia Bay, they're not really much change. But you stay onto this timeline, and you never. And then I guess Max never really uses her We Won't Power ever again. But with the other one, if you sacrifice Chloe, then all that's happened will happen again, just without Chloe. And yeah, so that's Life is Strange. So episode 4 gets 9 out of 10, and episode 10 gets 9 out of 10. I know the one score down may seem a bit too harsh, but that's my opinion. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we're going to be doing Life is Strange Before the Storm as of next on our list to do reviews. I'm trying to get all done down within the month of December. <laughs> uh, if you could tell, I've got a bit of a cold I have, but I'm still. I'm still here. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Peace. I thought it was time we would do this. Welcome to Life is Strange Before the Storm, Episode 1, The Review. Now, this should be a bit easy as if we don't need to do two things. There's only three episodes and Farewell soon will come out in 2018. So hopefully this should give me enough time. So yeah, I want to get all the stuff that's mainly Life is Strange done before Farewell in 2017. So hopefully this can help. Intro. First, I'd like to say, unlike the last one, had a nice cover, this game does not have a cover. In fact, it's a downloadable code. So if you want it in the case or whatever, like, too bad. Like, unless if America's got it correctly, I don't know. But the thing is, Hello Neighbor 
First it was going to be like there was going to be no disc whatsoever for Xbox One, but now there is. So it's like, if Tiny Bill can get this way, can't Square Enix and Deck 9 get this way? Like, Square Enix and Deck 9, I believe, have more money than actual, like, um, than Tiny Bill. Well, maybe, maybe they're similar. Look, it doesn't matter. Have a disc. I've been showing this before the storm. It's a game where you play as Chloe, who is 16 years old. This is before her death and also before Rachel's death also. This is also bought before the events of the main Life is Strange game. So basically this game and that other one is still canon. So with this one you start up playing as a 16 year old Chloe and how do you meet Rachel? Well you meet her in a band by, well she saves you from a pack of goons she does and that first big choice is there. Now you do get to make choices, dialogue choices, whatever, but the thing is that the time travel mechanic is gone. Instead, they call it backtalk, as of teenagers can do backtalk to get what they want or to make another person feel sad. Now, how do I know this? Well, first, I'm a teenager myself. I've done this many times. Um, second, if I, if I didn't even do that, I just know it because that's the thing what teenagers do. We're arseholes. But um, after that big part where you meet Wake sure you wake up in the morning and you're greeted to Joyce and also David outside. Now, William is in this game but through dream sequence, he is. Most of, all of the cast is voiced by different people, but I guess until Farewell comes along, that's going to be changed, that is. Now, you're off to um, school, you are, and one of the choices that you make is that, um, to Blackwell Academy, that you can either intervene with the bullying from between Nathan and Drew or you can just stay out of it. Mainly I chose to stay out of it because I feel it would be much more better because Nathan kills Chloe um, later on the lines. And plus, I feel like what's in the main game gives hints of what you need to do in this game. So like for instance, for Chloe to get expen suspended no, you, she has to get expelled because that's how the timeline works. So, after that little bit, you go in, you do, and Rachel's c come comes and open the door and sees you, goes in, and then you're in the performing arts area, and then you can explore the area, and also um, you talk to Rachel, and Rachel asks, do you want to come with me to a little field trip? And you will basically go and say yes. Now this is the part where your friendship with Rachel starts to develop more. Now with this part, you can either choose the friendly way, like you just want to be friends, something more, or the flirting way. Now if you choose the flirting way, spoiler, episode 2, depending on your actions from this one and this one, episode 2 will give you an option to kiss Rachel. That's all I'm really going to say. Uh, you either want to no more, and I search it up away. Um, so you get off the train, you do, and you go up. Now, it's not made clear what you're doing, but um, you're spying on people and you're just having fun, you are. But then you see um, this strange woman that looks like Rachel, and also this strange man who you have not met yet. Now, Rachel, well, whatever, that's the mother and that's the father. And um, after seeing that, Rachel wants to get a bottle of wine. And there's certain ways you can do this to get it from these two strangers. You can do it and get caught, or you can do it and not get caught. Um, so, pending your actions, you can not get caught, whatever. Um, after that, you, you're walking down, you are, and you see a junk yard you do and then this is the place where Chloe and Rachel have a bit of an argument they do but first you can see there's something wrong with Rachel now um, no matter what you do Rachel will go off in a half puff but before she goes you can either make a choice of saying that that to be more than friends or to be just just something special and Choose something special because that will be better. That will be now. After that, Chloe has a bit of a, um, a wage and gets his baseball bat and just starts hitting stuff like 
what an angry teenager does. So after that, after your little tantrum, you go into this dream sequence with William again. Now Max is not in the game, but she is present and mentioned heavily in this game. And because she's going to be in the farewell episode as if you get to play her so then, then that's going to be kind of like she still has strong presence in this game because after all we have seen a young version of Chloe and Max in the last one so the end conclusion for all this is that Wakeshaw reveals that that man who's kissing that woman is is Wakeshaw's father and big storm and fire and yes so, what is the end conclusion for this? The end conclusion of this game is that it's a very good episode it is. It's a very good start out and I couldn't believe like the people's faces of when this was going to start and how excited they were because I thought I was going to hate this but this is amazing. Episode 1 of Life is Strange Before the Scrum gets a 9 out of 10. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching, and episode 2 and episode 3 of this review will be coming very, 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 very soon. And yes, I'm being a bit of a pussy to play episode 3 at the moment. Peace guys, have a fantastic day. Oh, and Merry Christmas. This is my bedroom. This is the room where I mostly did my videos back when I was 15 in this room. I rarely went out to any places in my house. But we're not talking about that. Today we're going to be reviewing um, episode 2 of Life is Strange Before the Storm. Intro. Life is Strange Before the Storm episode 2 takes place after episode 1. It does like all of the other episodes. With this one having a bit more of the Life is Strange and also having a bit more dialogue between um, different characters, it's a real difference. Yes, you are still playing as Chloe. You are, and your friend Rachel Amber is in here. A lot of stuff goes on. Now, at the moment, I cannot remember the full story, but I will say this to you. Um, in this episode, you, you are exploring the junkyard, um, going with Frank, you are, um, making more big choices, pissing off people and by the end of it well let's say you've you're in a play now you do have a script you do and you can choose to read it or not but if you remember it and then the dialogue comes then I guess that's amazing and yeah you can fail by forgetting but Chloe is not an actor she says this herself she does Chloe um, after this um, when they you know bow to the people they do and after it's all done another big choice comes along during the dialogue of um, are we going to leave or not and Wait sure is basically like please believe me I'll do something for you to for you to believe me and then you have three options you do <laughs> um, no I feel like I should just show you it How about, um... Oh. Is that convincing enough? Yeah. <sighs> Holy shit. Enjoy that? 
<laughs> I know I did. So at the end of it, they do tell you another thing they do. You're at the Abba's house, you are, and you're wanting to prepare to leave, but that's more again in episode 3. In this one, you get to explore the Amber House and also speak to James and Rose. You do. And then you sit down for dinner, you do, and before all that closes, how could this get any more worse? Well, by that, Rachel is feeling unhappy and getting annoyed, and she's, in fact, she's just getting fed up, she is. Because of this, she is going to go a bit mad. Now, you have a choice. You can either play off cool, or you start it. But if you don't start it, she will start it. And sort of confronting the dad about who this other girl she was kissing. Now, there are ways of you can do this, but you just need to choose, really. So, the end conclusion is that, well, James says, the person that I was kissing was not my mistress, it was your mother, Rachel. And that's the end of episode two. What do I think of it? I've played it a couple of times, and I don't want to play it again because you can get fed up with playing some of this stuff. But, um... Episode 2 is kind of like a start off on what episode 3 could be like. Episode 2 gets a 9 out of 10. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you all on the next one. Peace. So, so far we have reviewed two, well, three, Batman Arkham games. We reviewed Batman Return to Arkham, Arkham Asylum, Arkham City, and also the DLC of Harley Quinn's Revenge. Now, we've mainly done that for the PlayStation 4 ports, but today we're going to be reviewing Batman Arkham Origins. Now, at the end of this review, I will say that, well, say something that we're going to be doing for the events of Avengers Infinity War this year. Batman Arkham Origins is created by Warner Brothers, Montreal and Warner Brothers Games. The only game that they actually created and published themselves. In the meantime, Rocksteady was actually doing something else, creating Batman Arkham Knight while demos were being released. Now, this game, many people did notice that it was so similar to Arkham City. The story did get changed, but the elements, the combat, all of that changed. And it was the same, basically. Now, I can say that um, I like the game I do. It tells a story before the Batman was the Batman. And this could relate to the stuff from the Gotham TV show. Of how and the way this could get set up. Now, um, the timeline was going for this at the beginning of this game, before Arkham Knight got created. It was basically Arkham Origins, Arkham Asylum, and... Arkham City with any of those DLC stuff fitting into the gaps, but now Arkham Knight's here It changed. So what is Arkham Origins about? Arkham Origins is about the wise of Batman, and this being his first year as the Batman. As of he was trained by Wesh Al Ghul, which is a, also a DLC there. Um, within this game, the main villain is Black Mask, but you soon realise that it's actually the Joker. With little side bosses and also other villains that are there, most wanted missions and much, much more. That's that. Barbara Gordon as a younger version, a teenager version, is there. And we get to see the start of her and eventually you get to do... She's kind of like she is in the previous Arkham game with her on one of those months of what... Missions. But 
with this game, um, at the end of it, you end up defeating the Joker in a church, but the GCPD still does not trust you. Now, some actors have been brought back, like for instance from the animated series, one of the guys have been brought back. Now I know, now I didn't know this, but he's Harvey he is. That's why Gordon seems to be a bit younger and Harvey seems to be a bit older. Now, this version of Harvey is basically a complete douchebag because in Gotham he's a bit more nicer, even if, it, even if it's darkest moments. Batman Arkham Origins um, is a weird game. Now, I'd, surely I don't need to explain the story that much because I'm hoping that some of you guys have played it, but what do I give Batman Arkham Origins? Well, I give it a 8.5 out of 10. Because after we playing it a couple of times and also it's not working on my PlayStation 3 because stupid controls, that's why. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching and I will say that our next reviews we're going to be reviewing as much Marvel stuff leading up to Avengers Infinity War. Not Black Panther because that's not as big as that other film. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Hashtag be the bat and I'll see you on the next one.